Good morning and welcome to Highway Online. I am so glad that you're here and I trust that you will be encouraged by your time with us today. We have chat rooms that are open, so if you'd be so kind as just drop in there even right now and just say hello and tell us what you're drinking with you right now today. Or maybe you're not drinking anything. Uh, just say hello. We want to have a chance to talk with each other and welcome each other. If this is your first time or one of your first times with us at Highway Online, would you text the word welcome with your phone? Pick up your phone, text the word welcome to 416 two six seven one one eight nine and we are so glad that you are here if you're also living locally and you are close to our highway building i just want to remind you that our building is open for in-person services at 10 30 sunday mornings and you are more than welcome to come and gather with us on our premises uh, couple of announcements of things that are upcoming and things we are doing as a church that we want you to be involved in. Firstly, we are collecting candy right now. Uh, we're doing it for uh, distribution to kids at the end of the month. And so if you would like to donate candy, you could do that. If it's too difficult for you to donate candy, you can give financially. And in your financial gift, just... Um, Tell us that it's for candy, and we have people here who will take all the donations and go shopping on your behalf. So we thank you for partnering with us as we reach the kids of our community. And speaking of kids, I am excited to announce that Zoom Kids Friday Nights is relaunching. We have been closed for over uh, 16 months, but on October the 15th, our Zoom Kids program will be relaunching as well as our junior high. So we're going to cover kids from JK to grade 8 and they kick off on Friday, October the 15th at 7 p.m. Uh, you can go to our website and you could register your kid. The program is free, but kids do need to be registered for the program. And we look forward to having your child with us on October the 15th. As well, our youth are gathering again on Monday, October the 18th at 7 p.m. And we just want you to remember those dates. Another date to remember is our highway prayer gathering on Sunday, October the 24th. It will be virtually on the Zoom platform still at this time, but we just want you to mark that date and don't forget it. Want to thank you so much for all of those who have been supporting the ministry at Highway Gospel Church over the last number of months. We could not continue the ministry without you. So thank you so much. If you want to give, we have four ways to give. They're at the bottom of the screen and you'll see them there. And we thank you for your faithfulness because your faithfulness to Highway is allowing the ministry to continue to move forward. If you're following our Sunday teaching notes, you can open the U version and go to events there. And we just invite you to worship with us together at this time. And I want you to remember this, Highway is a place to belong. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes
every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Let's pray together this morning. Father, we just come before you. And Lord, I know today that as people are with us, as they're watching, as they're participating in this service today, I know that there are people today who need your strength, people who need 
to know that they are loved and wanted. And so, Father, today I ask that in the name of Jesus, that you would meet people right where they are. To those who are feeling lonely or down today, Lord, that you would come alongside them, that you would encourage their spirit. To those who are feeling like they're calling out to God and they're not sure that you're there and they're not sure that you are hearing them or listening even to them. Lord, I ask today that you would send reassurance to them, that they would know that you are the God who hears and the God who answers and the God who cares about them. Lord, we thank you that we have you to come to, that we have you that we can call on. And so, Father, we ask today that you would encourage our hearts and our spirits together and we'll give you all the glory and all the honor. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm so excited to tell you about our campaign series called Daring Faith. This campaign series is built on three elements. The first is our Sunday teaching, which, which kicks off the theme for the week. The second element is a small group component, which I encourage you to be part of. And the third element is a daily devotional that you can do for 40 days throughout this campaign, one per day. Um, to do all this, we have a study guide that we wanna make available to you. In the study guide, you're going to find notes pages for the Sunday teaching with fill in the blanks. You're going to find your 40 days of devotionals in here, and you're also going to find some uh, questions and notes for our small groups. Now, you could have this book. We are asking for a suggested donation of $10. So if you could afford a suggested donation of $10, that will help us cover the cost of the book or, uh, some of the cost and uh, if you can't afford anything right now it doesn't matter because we want you to have a study guide and to be part of this campaign that's where you're going to find a lot of good information for this campaign as well you can go to our our website so if you go on your computer and you go to highwaygospel.ca and type that in and then scroll down the page past the introduction to the daring faith campaign series box there's a button there that says click here for more information. It'll take you to a landing page, which will give you more of an overview of the campaign, tell you about it. It'll uh, give you the six topics that we're going to look at. At the bottom of that page, you're going to find two buttons, find or join a small group or a highway YouTube channel. So if you press the small group button, that's where you can find a list of small groups. And if you're not already in one, then you could click there and find one and click on what you want to join and we will put you guys all in touch with your small group leaders and if you miss a sunday teaching uh, you can go back and look at all of our sunday teachings for this series on our youtube channel and if it's the current week that you missed you just got to go to the bottom of the uh, main web page and we're going to post the sunday teaching there for that week as well I am so excited about this campaign and I am so looking forward to having you join us on this campaign. I can't wait for it to start on October the 17th. Will you be part of this campaign series? Good morning. I am so glad you can be with us today as we begin as a church to prepare for our upcoming campaign series, Daring Faith. I want to take a few moments today to take a very broad look at the why of faith. This morning's message is actually entitled, Why Faith? And we're going to look very quickly this morning. We're not going to dive in real deep because as we take part in the Daring Faith campaign series, we're going to get in depth or more in depth on faith. But today, we're just gonna take a look as we prepare ourselves for what we as the staff believe God has in store for us over the next six weeks, starting next Sunday. So plan to be with us now, and I'll give you some more details at the end of this message today. But today, we're gonna look at why faith. And there's two very, very important reasons for why we need to have faith. 
and they're very simple and they're, they're laid out in Scripture. And the first one is this. We can only know God by faith. There's no other way to have a relationship with God but through faith in Jesus Christ. We can't have a relationship with God by any other means. We can't have a relationship with God through any of the other so-called gods. We can't have a relationship with God because of our wonderful knowledge. Because knowing God requires us to have faith. Let's take a look for a moment this morning at Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. And the Bible says this, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. See, belief is the key. Belief is a part of faith. The Jew first, and also the Gentiles. This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture said, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. You see, we can only have a new life in relationship with God by faith. Because none of us have seen God face to face. None of us were around when Jesus walked this earth. So it's, it's faith that brings us to Christ. It's a belief that is so strong that it becomes faith that brings us into that relationship. Again, you can't manufacture that in and of yourself. It only comes through faith. Knowledge can't even do that for us. That's why this Christian life we talk about every Sunday here at, at Highway Online and in person in church is based on faith. As well, the Bible also tells us that we can only please God by faith. That's an interesting concept in and of itself. You and I can only please God by faith. Of course, that goes back to what we were just talking about. We can only know God by faith. And knowing God it is what pleases God. But then God pushes us on to live our lives based upon that faith. Those of us who believe this morning, we live our lives based upon the faith we have. And to please God requires faith. I know that sounds like I'm talking in a lot of circles, but that's what I want you to really take away today. The only way we can please God is by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says it this way, And it is impossible to please God without faith. It goes on, but that's very plain and simple. The only way to please God is by faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. We need faith in God to come to Him and to please Him and to truly know Him. So, after all that, what is faith? Now, I've struggled with this one. I've, I've read Scripture over the years. I've really struggled to come up with a basic, simple definition for faith. I've talked about it to many people. I have, you know, parts of it are over here and parts of it are over here in a conversation. And it was actually, I believe God gave me this this week while I was driving my car. And it's a, it's a very, again, broad and simple definition. definition. It doesn't encompass everything. But I think it's a good starting point. And I, I, will, I will define it as saying this. Faith is seeing things through the lens that there is a God who is all-powerful and who desires to intervene on your behalf, on my behalf, on our behalf. Better, better way to put it. See, I'm even simplifying as I go here. But 
Listen to that for one second again. Faith is seeing things through the lens that there is a God who is all-powerful and who desires to intervene on our behalf. See, God desires to intervene in our lives. God is all-powerful and God does exist to go backwards. Faith is seeing things through that lens. Just like you're seeing me through a camera lens right now, you're not actually seeing me. My shirt may be slightly different color the way you're seeing it on your screen. My hair might be slightly different than you're seeing it on the screen because you're seeing it through the lens of the camera. Well, when we see things through the lens of faith, we see things through God's eyes, through, through the eyes of, of a knowledge that God exists, that He has all power, and that He wants to work for us. When we see life in that way, that changes things. And faith does change things in our lives. So what I want to look at for really quickly, and I'm going to go through these real quickly, is what happens when we don't have faith? And then we're going to contrast that with what happens when we do have faith. So I'm going to give you a list, and I'm not going to explain any of these things. They're all pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you want to go and see where I found these points on what happens when we don't have faith, you can go and read for yourself uh, the book of Numbers, chapters 13 and 14. It's a very familiar story to those people who have been in the church for a long time. It's the spies being sent in to check out the promised land before the people of God cross over into it. And I'm not going to go any farther than that. Go read Numbers chapter 13 and 14 if you want to know where I came up with these, these what happens when we don't have faith points. The first thing I seen as, as I looked at Numbers chapter 13 to 14 is this. Without faith, we exaggerate our problems. Sounds very familiar to all of us. We can tend to dwell on our problems rather than dwelling on who God is. And I said I wasn't going to make an explanation, and I just did, so I just broke my own rule. But bear with me on that. Without faith, we underestimate our own abilities. Without a faith in God, we think we can't do it. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Without faith, we get discouraged. Isn't that so true of us as human beings often? We see everything around us. We forget to see God. And we get discouraged. We get down. We get to a point where we don't want to move on any farther. And so without faith, we get discouraged. Without faith... Here's a big one. We complain about our lives. Am I the only one that's ever done that? When I'm struggling with something, when I'm struggling with my faith, I complain. Oh, woe is me. Life is so tough. Oh, look at this and look at that. And then I complain. Look at that person. They've got this going for them and that going for them. And here I am stuck in the mud. Without faith, we tend to complain. And finally, without faith, we often do this. Without faith, we give up and blame God. Isn't it funny how that when we lack faith, we blame God? Interesting twist there. It's us that lacks faith, and yet we blame God for, that, for the things that are going on. We blame God for that. And it's a human principle a human condition that we tend to go through it's funny i was saying to someone the other day or actually just earlier today isn't it funny how even those people who don't believe in god when life is not going well who do they blame we blame god the god we don't believe in it makes no sense to me but part of the human condition is when we lack faith we give up and we blame god but that's not where I want to concentrate today. I want to concentrate and I want to be uplifting in concentrating on what happens when we do 
have faith. Because life is completely different when we have faith in God. So, when we have faith, I got five points here that I want to give to you. With faith, our problems shrink. Think about that for a second. If we have faith in God, who, in a God who is all powerful, our problems don't seem so bad because we can believe that God is at work and we can know that God is at work. Again, this isn't a distant hope. This isn't a, I really, really hope God's at work or I really, really want God to do this. It's a, it's an, faith is an assurance that God exists, that He has the power and that He wants to do something for us. So with faith, our problems shrink. Luke chapter 18, verse 27 says this, speaking of Jesus, it says, He replied, What is impossible for people is possible with God. Jesus, in talking to His disciples, actually talking about being able to forgive someone in, this, in its context, He says, What is impossible for for, with people is possible with God. You see, we serve a God of the impossible. Jesus did all kinds of things, all kinds of miracles that were, to humans, impossible things. And yet He healed the sick. He opened blinded eyes. Deaf ears heard. The dead were raised. All things that seem impossible to us as human beings. But with God, all things are possible. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, the first part of it says this, Is anything too hard for the Lord? That was a question asked to Abraham and Sarah. And of course, the answer to that is no. Nothing is too hard for God. Let's remember that today. Let's hold on to that today and every day of our lives. Second thing I see is that with faith, the door is opened for miracles or for a miracle. We often say, there are, or many people would say, not we, many people would say, there are no miracles today. But there are plenty of miracles today. God is still a miracle working God. Yet, we must have faith. Mark chapter 11 verse 22 to 24 says this, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Not it might be yours, it will be yours. Now, I have to caution you here. This is not a God is our servant mentality here. Well, I really want $10 million. So God, I'm going to have faith and therefore you must do it. We can't look at this, this verse like some people teach that this means we basically order God around. No. That's not how it works. He is still God. But we have to have faith in Him that He will meet our needs. If that mountain needs to be moved, we need to have faith that He will move it when we ask. Does that make sense, I hope, today? Thirdly, with faith, God is moved to act on our behalf. Again, I'm going to go back to what I just said in that last little portion and under that last point. Again, this does not mean God is there to act on every little thing that we think we may need. It's not God is our servant. We don't, okay, I have faith, so God, you're going to do this. And again, there's a slight difference. I can say, I have faith, so I know God, you're gonna do this. That's different than what I just said. I have faith, so God, you're going to do this. 
No, I have faith so God, that God, you're going to do this. It's about attitude there. Again, we don't have faith, therefore we order God around. I want to be clear on that. But we have faith that we can ask God for anything and He will do it. So with faith, God is moved to act on our behalf. Matthew 29, or sorry, Matthew 9, verse 29 says this, Then He touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it will happen. And what happens next? The blind eyes are open. See, our faith moves God to move. Not our faith causes or makes God move. Our faith moves God to move. I hope I made that clear because in my mind I just muddled that all up. But faith, with faith, God is moved to do things on our behalf. With faith, God is moved to act on our behalf. With faith, the promises of God are unlocked. Catch that with me. With faith, the promises of God are unlocked. Now, I don't know if you know this. Um, I didn't have that. I don't have exact numbers. But there are over 7,000 promises God has made in His Word. And they are done. Because Jesus came and died, those promises are sealed and will happen if they haven't already but in those promises they are sealed with jesus with his arrival his life his death his resurrection and our faith unlocks those promises so we can stand on the promises of god's word because of jesus and we can stand on them through faith 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for His glory. You see, when we have faith that God will, has fulfilled His promises in Christ, and we stand on those promises, we actually bring glory to to Jesus is what that, that scripture is referencing there. And we can count on, because He's made those promises, because Christ came and fulfilled all those promises, those promises are available to us today. And finally, with faith, God-given dreams become reality in our lives. You see, God gives us dreams. God puts dreams in our hearts and in our minds. I'm not talking dreams now where we, you know, go to sleep at night and you dream, and I know during COVID dreams have, for many people have been really, really weird and strange. I don't think those are the dreams God puts in our minds. Because I know during COVID I've had some weird, weird dreams. Uh, but that might be too much information. But God gives us dreams for our future. God gives us dreams for our family. God gives us dreams for our own personal lives. And with faith, those dreams will become reality. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Again, some versions uh, define the word think, and they replace it with dream or imagine. You see, God gave us our imagination. God plants dreams in our hearts. And Ephesians here tells us God will do way more than we can even dream in ourselves. And I almost forgot a point. I said the last one was the final one, but this is actually the final one. With faith, we have the power to hold on. This might be the most important one of all of these. With faith, we don't give up. Remember the last point was without faith? 
we give up and we blame God, with faith, we have the power to hold on. No matter what's going on around us, no matter what we see swirling around us with our human eyes, when we look through the lens of faith, when we look through as God sees it, we know that nothing is impossible. We understand that. We understand that God has given us a dream, so we need to just hold on and press forward. We need to know that it's already done. That's what we can do when we have faith. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9 says this, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by, abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. You see, no matter what's going on, when we see with the eyes of faith, if we're knocked down, we can get back up. If we're confused, we can talk to God. We can seek answers in the Word. We can hear His vo the voice of the Holy Spirit giving us answers. Though we're, we're, everything seems to be swirling around us, we can stand firm knowing that God is able and at work. That's what faith accomplishes in us. That's what faith can do for us. That, this is why we need to have faith. Now, you may be out there watching this today, and you've never come to that faith place. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you've always had questions. Maybe some of this doesn't make sense to you, that there is a God who created what we, where we live, the heavens, the earth, the universe. Maybe it doesn't fully make sense to you that His Son came and lived on earth as a human and died on a cross to take our place and to pay the price for our sins. That often doesn't make sense to us as humans because as humans we tend to be selfish. We don't tend to want to die for other people, especially people we don't know. Especially for people who are oftentimes our enemies. And yet that's what Christ did when He came. And then He rose again from the grave, gained something we often don't can't get our heads around. But that's where faith comes in. If God's speaking to you right now, and I believe He is speaking to many, many people, and you need to take that step of faith today, it's very simple. We're going to say a prayer in a minute. I would ask you to pray that prayer with us. Believe it in your heart. Believe it in faith today. And Jesus will come into your life. It's that simple. Even that being that simple takes faith because we all think everything has to be complicated. But today I encourage you, if you've never made that step of faith, just pray this prayer with me and I'll tell you a little bit how to follow up on that after. But let's pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you that you are real, that you are all-powerful, and that you sent your Son to die in my place. Lord, I invite you into my life right now. Lord, I invite you to help me to develop this faith we've been speaking about this morning, that I've been listening to about this morning. Help me to develop it. And help me to know you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time this morning, we'd ask you to do us a big favor because we want to help you in this journey with God. And it's easy. If you just take your phone and you text the word love to the church phone number, which is 416-267-1189. Again, text the word love to 416 267 1189. 
and we will follow up with you. Or if you're watching on our, our, li our broadcast through the church website, you can just click the button, I have decided to follow Jesus or something like that is what it says. And again, we will follow up with you and help you begin this journey. For the rest of us today who are people of faith, let me encourage you, use your faith. Use your faith every day. For without it, we're bound to fail. Grow your, as, as we go into this campaign series, be part of it so it can grow your faith. And you can be part of it by being part of the next six Sunday teachings. We're going to kick off the campaign series, Daring Faith, next Sunday, October 17th. And I want, I'm looking down because I want to make sure I get you all the information. Um, you can be part of it here in person in the building. You just have to sign up for your ticket uh, by going to our website and clicking reserve my seat. Or you can be with be part of it as well in our online services on our highway online over the next six weeks as well. And if you miss a Sunday teaching, um, they are uh, on, a, they will be on our YouTube channel. So you can get back, go back and catch up if you need to, or the current week is, is always posted at the bottom of the front, the homepage of our website. So you can always go there. If you, if you missed, if you missed today, you won't hear this message. But if you had missed today, you can just go to our website during the week and, and get this, this teaching. Or if you want to re-listen to it. Um, there are study guides to go along with this Daring Faith campaign series. I keep wanting to just call it one or the other, but we're calling it a campaign series. So you can, you can get those workbooks. I'll tell you how in just a minute. And... Uh, there's a study guide in there and some devotionals as well. As well, we encourage you, the small groups will be discussing this Daring Faith campaign series. So if you're part of a small group, you're already good, you're good to go, and you know what to do. If you want to be part of a small group, we encourage you to test drive a small group. It's a short time, it's six weeks, great time to take a small group and test drive it. Just like you would test drive a car, you're test driving a small group. And I, we believe, I believe and we as a church believe, you will be blessed by being part of a small group. All our small groups are currently meeting online by Zoom. And if you want to be part of a small group, you can either leave us a message here at the church and we'll help you through that. Or you can go online to our highway website and find some more information out about there, about our small groups there. But we're more than willing to help you find the small group that works for you. Finally, if you want to be part of this series, we are, we're encouraging you to do the daily devotionals for the next six weeks. There's 40 days of devotionals in the, in the study guide, and they will help you daily as you endeavor to grow your faith the, the first day of the daily devotionals is, is next Sunday. If you want the devotional guide and you want us to get one to you, there are a couple of ways we can do that. We have them here in the building on Sundays. Uh, that, if you're coming to the building, if not, call us at the church, leave us a message about the study guide, and we'll try to make arrangements to get one to you. We are asking that you, uh, a small donation of $10 towards a study guide. You can either give that cash if you're picking up a, a study guide, or you can send that to us uh, electronically through our giving methods. Just mark it as in uh, Daring Faith. That's an easiest way to do it, and we'll get it. But again, if you can't afford the $10, we don't want you to miss out. So it's a suggested donation. If you need a book, just let us know. We will get you a book. I hope you've had a great day. I hope God has blessed you as you've heard this message. Have a wonderful week, and God bless.